you're listening to the My Simplified Life podcast, and this is episode number 218. Welcome to the My Simplified Life podcast, a place where you will learn that your past and even your present don't define your future. Regardless of what stage of life you're in, I want you to feel inspired and encouraged to pursue your dreams, simplify your life, and start taking action today. I'm your host, Michelle Glogovac, and I'm excited to share my stories and life lessons with you while taking you on my own journey. This is my simplified life. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Michelle Glogovac. Happy almost Valentine's Day. Although we think about Valentine's Day as love and romance, it's also simply about friendship. And how are we making new friends today? If you're reading How to Get on Podcasts, you know that friendship is a huge theme throughout the book. It even relates to every single topic you create. And so I'm thrilled today that my guest has become a friend because we met through another mutual friend and we met online. And, you know, once you click, you just simply click. And we started DMing each other. And so this interview was the first time we got to be face to face via computer for the first time, but we absolutely hit it off even more than what was going on in our DMs. So my guest today is Rosie Lee. She is a debut author. Her book is called The Gardens of Eden. It has the most beautiful cover. There's flowers everywhere. Even as we recorded, she had flowers in the background. Her book box has flowers. It's it's just absolutely gorgeous, and it perfectly sets the tone for her book and for getting to know Rosie. So one of the unique things about Rosie, and this is the first time I have ever interviewed an author who goes under a pen name. So her real name isn't actually Rosie, and we're not even going to tell you what it is, but I wanted to know all about what it's like to write a book that is not your real name. And what does that feel like? Does it feel any different? So Rosie answers all of these questions and so much more, along with the fact uh, that she has a full-time job as a physician. So this is really just so much great stuff. I, I can't wait for you all to meet Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Hello. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. I am so excited to see you. I love that you have flowers behind you. (laughs) It matches your whole theme, the book. Uh, It's it's just gorgeousness all around. So can you introduce yourself to everyone, please? Yes. Hello, everyone. I am Rosie Lee, the author of The Gardens of Eden. And it's the most beautiful book, Inside and Outside. I've started reading it. I haven't read it completely, so full honesty for everyone listening, but... The beginning is gorgeous. The cover is breathtaking. Your boxes that you sent out, uh, oh my gosh, it's probably the most gorgeous thing I have ever seen be sent. I was like, I need to up-level my game. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They were a labor of love. They're gorgeous. So can you give us a little bit about what Gardens of Eden is about? And then I want to talk about you. Sure. So I describe the Gardens of Eden as a heartwarming family drama, but a family drama that has a a happy ending. So it follows the four women of the Garden family who live on an idyllic estate in the fictional town of Eden, Georgia. And Ruth is the CEO of the family's multi-million dollar peanut business. But she is um, at placed in a, a, a role of leadership after her husband, Bo, has passed away recently. Her cousins by marriage, uh, Martha and Mary, they're two sisters who are not happy at all about Ruth's role in the company, um, her status in the family, uh, as well as her status in the community. So the person leading that is Martha. And Martha drags her sister Mary into the family fray. But Mary really just wants to mind her business, literally mind her business, because she started she started a new restaurant that serves healthy comfort food. So she really just wants to mind her business, but her sister keeps dragging her into the into the drama. And then the matriarch of the family is Naomi, and she is really tired of holding the family together. So she takes a step back, and the women have to kind of fend for themselves and figure out how to work together or not. 
I love it. And is there such thing as a healthy comfort food? Um, I haven't discovered it yet. (laughs) Yes. At Mary's Restaurant, which is called the Alabaster Lunchbox. That's exactly what it serves. Uh, I hope there's recipes included. (laughs) As we talked about before we even recorded, I'm like, I need some healthy recipes. (laughs) No. Well, that can be the next book then. Well, I have a little plan for that, but we got to sell this book first. Oh, it's going to sell. And it is selling. Congratulations. It's already out, everybody. So go buy it. And there's a Goodreads giveaway on it too right now. So it should still be going on by the time this comes out. So you can win it or you can just buy it. So go buy it. The Goodreads giveaway ends February 20th. Oh, yes. We'll get this out before then. So let's talk about you because- But by nature, you are not an author. (laughs) You have a day job. I do. I do. Um, So my my alter ego, and I use the phrase alter ego because Rosie Lee is a pen name, but my my alter ego is a physician. So there are health themes in the book. I love this. And I love, I want to talk about having a pen name because- I I was at an author event where there was this woman introduced and she has a pen name as well because she's actually in healthcare profession too. And I thought, now what is that like to have not your name on a book that you've written, even though it is your, you know, your name, your pen name, but what is that like to promote something like us? People must know who, obviously people know who you are and that this is your pen name. So how do you, A, keep that secret? And what does that feel like to have this pen name on the book? And how do you even come up with a pen name in general? Okay, that's so many questions. I know, I'm sorry. They just kept coming out. (laughs) It's okay, it's okay. So first of all, it's still very exciting for me uh, using a pen name. So, And I think that's because I released a little free book kind of using the reader magnet system um, to help build my author platform. So that's where you list one book for free on um, ebook retailer sites. And then if people like it, then they go to your website, sign up for your newsletter and get the second book. So I started that, I think I published my reader magnet in 2018 or 2019. Yeah, 2018. And so I had some time to get used to using this name. And it was really a, a, a way to build my platform, but also just to kind of start to build some some author muscles with marketing and, and getting my feet wet. And so for me, that really helped me to build my brand, but also to get used to this brand, this pin name, feeling like feeling like uh, me. And so it just feels like my name on a book. <laughs> that's really <laughs> my, it just, it really does. But I think that's why, because I had some time to, to get used to it. And so like my little free book, that was exciting, you know, to see my name there, but it was just like, okay, you know, nice. But there was a difference for me seeing my name on, on my, my debut novel. And I think is uh, it's because, you know, I really have just kind of em- embraced the name. And it's also a, a family name. And so for me, that makes it super special uh, because my pin name is chosen after women in my family. So to see my debut novel finally come out after so much work and to think about the women who helped to inspire it, the name, but also the the family story, that made it just so exciting. Like even just talking about this, I I see myself in my foyer after I'd closed the door from bringing the box in and opening the box and just seeing the name and like, oh, they would be so proud. So yeah. I love that. I love that there's meaning behind it because I do wonder like, how do you come up with a pen name? Like, how does that even come about? I don't know what my name would be, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So I went through this process where I thought about using my legal first name and changing the last name to my mom's maiden name because, you know, just growing up with all my cousins, having my mom's maiden name, you know, we just, we still felt like a part of the family because we are, but it was like, oh, I want to be a insert last name. And so I thought, oh, I do that. But there was another author who already had that name. And so I decided... (laughs) Yeah, I'm not going to do that because the names, while unusual by some people's opinion, it's a very popular name in in other circles. And so people would just easily confuse us. And I didn't want to deal with that. And how has that been being a physician and a debut novelist? Like those are two heavy jobs. They are. I know that launching a book is a big, big deal. So how are you navigating the two? 
Yeah. So I divide my time. Uh, traditionally, my work is split s- split between doing community health consulting and patient care. And that's a model I've used for years. And so I say my time, but my alter ego's time um, is divided <laughs> that way. And so as a community health consultant, I'm self-employed, so I control my own schedule. So it's a lot of juggling and still balancing and still a lot of late nights and uh, work on the weekend. But with proper planning and trying to be as efficient as possible, it does still work out. And so I can kind of choose what projects I take on and, and whatnot. But that reminds me, I didn't answer one of your questions about what it's like, how I manage the pen name with people, you know, knowing who I am. So for when I release my kind of introductory book, My Reader Magnet, that I self-published, I really kept it very quiet. I didn't tell anyone that I was doing it. And so really only family, friends, and a couple professional contacts who I'm you know, very friendly with, they knew ab- about my writing, but I really kept it very private otherwise. And so although I was still very active in social media, no one really, no one really knew. But as I got closer to my book's release date, um, I started talking about it more. And so that way I was able to separate things. And for me, that was really important because with my alter egos consulting work, I didn't want my my client pool to change at all. I didn't want clients to feel like, oh, she won't be able to fully commit to my to our, our health consulting project if she's worried about writing books or if she's on social media. So it was really important for those reasons to keep it quiet. I don't know that they would have really cared, but I didn't want to find out. And now, you know, I don't think anyone's bothered by it. I think they've seen like, wow, you've been working all this and we didn't know. And our work has been unaffected. So people are happy for me. And it's, it's just fine. That's an interesting point because I actually had prospective clients say that to me too, of you're launching a book. Will you be able to still help me and and do the work. And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, that's the bread and butter, you know, the, the book isn't going to pay the mortgage right, <laughs> for exactly. years to come. Yeah. Oh, maybe it will, we'll see. But yeah, of course, this is, you know, right. I already wrote the book. So launching it is really nothing at this point when you consider how much time it takes to write a book. Yeah. Well, I 100% agree with you because that's exactly how I feel. I also know what it's like to work with people, whether they're consultants or consultants that I bring on for my health consulting, who really just don't have time. But people don't always say that because what? They want to pay their mortgage. So in that way, I do think it's a fair question. I don't appreciate being asked it, but it's still a fair (laughs) question. (laughs) Yeah, because I would ask too. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So we know that you released the ebook in 2018. But at what point did you decide, you know, I want to write after being in healthcare for so long? How did this come about? Sure, that's a great question. So I always wanted to write, probably in college. So, okay, so growing up, I wanted to be a fashion designer and actress, and I knew I would just always write because I enjoyed writing. But my parents wouldn't let me move to New York to study fashion design and acting because I graduated from high school at 16, and they were like, you're 16, you're not going to New York. And I was like, what? But they told me this like the summer before my senior year in high school. So I'm like, why didn't you people tell me this years ago so I could come up with another plan? But I'd gone to all of these like summer programs in high school that prepare you for um, pre-medical careers. So they essentially brainwashed me into deciding to become a physician because I was like, okay, well, if I can't be a fashion designer and actress, I guess I'll go be a doctor. That was literally what I was thinking. <laughs> and that's normally the fallback plan that's for anyone normally who wants plan. to be a, an actress or a yeah. fashion designer. Yeah, yeah. and it, I'm so serious. Because I really, for me, it's always been about how to educate people about health and how to make health feel more accessible. Uh, And so I thought about the people in my family and my neighborhood and my church community. And I was like, you know, if they knew better, you know, they might make, you know, better decisions. And so science was always a class I had to like work a little harder to get an A. I was like an A-B student in science and more easily got A's in other subjects. So it was a challenge. It really was. But so I decided to do it. And I mentioned that because... When I was in college, again, pre-med, I took in in like my, I think it was my, yeah, my freshman English class. And I had so much fun doing my 
semester long portfolio and my English teacher gave really good feedback. And he was like, I was wondering what you were going to do with that story and all that. And I was like, I wonder if I could like really do this writing thing I've been thinking about. And I was like, yeah, I guess I probably could, but I'm going to have to like do that later. And then I thought, you know, maybe I'll find a way to tie in health education with writing fiction. And so that's why I mentioned that my book has themes uh, around health. So even the short stories that I put into my little self-published reader magnet, many of them had health themes. They're not overtly in your face. They're just people dealing with health the way that we deal with health in our everyday lives. And so that's a similar approach that I took in the Gardens of Eden. And can we talk about your eBooks too? Because you're the, you're the first person that I've interviewed that had this marketing plan to begin with. So I'm completely intrigued and want to learn more about this. I'm like, well, maybe this is the next path that I can go on <laughs> if I want to go down the the fiction route because that, that's it's such a great idea. And so, how long are these stories that you're putting out there? And do they pay for the second one when they get the first one for free? So, okay, great questions. So. I initially just planned to write a novel, but as I was putting together my author website, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be nice? I mean, no one, no one knows who I am. So wouldn't it be nice if I had like a short story or something? It's like a writing sample. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to write a short story. And then I realized I didn't know how to write a short story and I'd never tried writing one. Like I did. No, I guess I did try like, but that was back in college, which at that point, just to help, it was easily 20 years ago when I'd written (laughs) like a short story (laughs) because I'd been just still kind of working on a, trying to think about how to write a a novel just whenever I had time. I never tried writing anything short. And so I, I hadn't since college. And so I took a writing workshop and I happened to find a writing workshop that was on flash fiction. I didn't know what flash fiction was, but I learned about it in this writing workshop. And with flash fiction, the stories are usually a thousand words or less. Some people write flash that's 500 or less. Some people write 100 word stories, but I tend to write them a thousand words or less. And my writing style is is very similar to my approach of writing a, a um, writing a novel. And so for me, it was great practice for that. And so the first short story I wrote, I got really great feedback on it. And um, someone I res- really respect a lot, who's a writer, said to me, "You know, you should really write more of these, and you know, do something with them. Like try to get them published. That'll make it easier for you as you try to get an agent and try to find a publisher for your book." And so I went, oh, "I just really want to write my novel." But okay, fine. She's also like my cousin, so I'm like, "All right, I guess I'll listen to her." And so I did it. And so I set a goal for myself that I would try to get each of the stories published in some sort of literary journal, and then afterwards decided to put five of them together in one little free magnet reader magnet book. And then the second one um, to have five more stories. And so at first, um, I had the second book for sale on ebook retailer sites for 99 cents. But then also people could get it for free if they signed up for my newsletter eventually I took down the one that they could buy so that they could only get it through my newsletter. And that was a really great way of building my newsletter, by the way. That's very smart. And so the five stories that get put into one book, are they all related or are they completely different? They're not. And I didn't realize that people cared so much about stories being connected but that was one thing that I heard. Now, some people, you know, were fine with it. I called it my Beautiful Complicated Family series. So I've got Beautiful Complicated Family Volume 1 and then the Beautiful Complicated Family Volume 2. So all the stories are about family drama, but the characters um, and, and plots aren't, aren't connected at all. I love this. These are great ideas. And a, a thousand words for anyone who's listening, a thousand words you can get done in a day. Quite, I'm going to say easily because that's always been my goal is a thousand words a day. And if you start writing, you're like, oh, boom, it's done. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's a, it's an, an easy goal. It's easy to set that goal. Um, <laughs> and for me, I can get a first draft done in a in a day. I need more time to work on it. 
And there are writing workshops that you can do online, because I certainly have done some, where you will generate several flash fiction stories over the course of a week or a weekend. And so you have to know that you're going to spend time revising and rewriting and all of that. But yeah, so I, I, for me, it was really great. People who are really strict about flash fiction really talk about how it's its own uh, writing form. And, uh, and so it's, it's, it's its own genre. And I fully um, agree with that. I'm not a flash fiction purist, though, but I think there's space in the genre for for lots of different approaches. But I really love writing it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I, it feels like it's something that would be manageable to write. As a reader, I'm probably going to want more because how can you give me everything in just a thousand words? Oh, you can. You can't. But it's about, <laughs> I need to read. I need to read your two ebooks. Yeah. So it's about having appropriate expectations. So what I've learned is that people who aren't familiar with flash fiction, that's exactly the feedback that they give. I want it more. But I think even sometimes a, a flash fiction story can be really well written, but people want more. So you can just write another one. So I will say that book two of my beautiful complicated family series features a story that is kind of continues the story of, of one of the characters in, in book one. And that was a lot of fun to write. It was so I'm going to go download them. If, if I sign up for the newsletter, do I get to download them today? Yes, but I'll also okay. just send them to you for free. <laughs> <laughs> but not you listeners. You listeners have to go and subscribe. <laughs> That's right. Listeners have to sign up for the newsletter. And Rosie, I, I've already connected with Rosie, so I'm on a new level. Okay, yeah. everybody? <laughs> we are fast friends. We are. And, you know, I'm trying to remember how we originally connected because I know you brought me into the 2024 debut novel, debut author um, group. And then we started following each other. I did, even though I don't I don't get to spend much time there myself. But I was like, this is a great group, Michelle. You should join it. But there was something before that. So I, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about it. And I, I think I figured it out. So you tell me if I'm right. I think... When Lee Stein posted my promo box, you commented, mm -hmm. and then you either we either had an exchange in the comments, or one of us DM the other, and I found out about your book, and I said, "Oh, you must join this group," and that's that's how it. it. It was through Lee. Everything circles through Lee. It really Everything does. Lee. <laughs> it all funnels through Lee. <laughs> That's funny. She is a great connector. She gets a lot of shout outs on, on the program. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. She shared your box and I was like, oh, it no, heart okay. palpitations. It's, it no. was just everybody has. We'll post a picture of it. I'll, I'll put it with the, the graphics for this episode so that way everybody can see it. So you'll have to send me a picture of it because. Oh, that's sweet of you. I will. It, it's just gorgeous. And they're the teacup and just the flowers and. It's absolutely stunning. I, I gush over it because it is oh. the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And I know it's it takes work and effort and time, but to see it in real life, I, I know that feeling too where you're like, oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, it's fun. But I mean, you know, there are people who do this kind of these kind of things for important events in their lives or just usually personal things, right? And so... I'm that kind of person. I was the kid who was like always doing some craft project or something because I'm like really an artsy, creative person. I just don't get to do that. I should say my alter ego doesn't get to do that very much <laughs> in in her usual life. Um, so that's for me one thing that's been really fun about um, my debut novel and and trying to spread the word about it is I've got to do some fun, creative things because that's what they all say, right? When you're doing marketing, you should do the things that you really enjoy doing. So yeah, that's what I've done. I agree. Yeah. I felt that way very much of like, I, I want there to be a second book, what it will be. I don't know, but I'm like, this is, I'm going to treat this as if it's the one and only, you know, it's like after having your first child, you're, you're like, I hope there's going to be another one in, you know, a lot of cases. And you're like, but if there isn't, then I better do everything there is with this there one, you know, one, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a party and there's going to be sushi and wine and cake and <laughs> fancy boxes and all the things, you know, you got to right. celebrate it. I love it. So what's next for you? So there is a second book in the Gardens of Eden series. I'm very excited about that. It comes out spring 2025. So I'm working on that now. That's amazing. Is it going to be just as beautiful, if not more? Thank you. Funny you should ask, because I just 
queued up my email to my editor with my ideas for the cover. So after we wrap up this interview, I'm going to just read it one more time and send it to her. So I hope so is the answer. My vision has it still being very beautiful. Of course, there's a lot of pressure about, you know, what type of graphics and promotion and things we'll do, but I'm trying not to get overwhelmed by that right now. Well, you set the bar a little bit high, but I'm sure you can achieve it again, if not even better. We'll see. You know, it's kind of like, okay, so I'm a, I'm a firstborn, you know, how like the, the parents put all the attention on the firstborn and then the, have all these rules and we're going to like boil these bottles and do all this. And then the second kid just gets thrown something like here, feed yourself. That may also happen. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> Go out there and do your thing, but sell yourself. Right, right, right. No, I'll I'll do something. But, you know, there's a a lot that we, particularly debut authors, go through with the balance between, uh, you know, really navigating the things that we do on our own as authors and the support that we get from our publishing company. So for me, I I hope not to make such an uh, an extensive investment of time and and money in, in each of my books. So we'll... I'll stop there, but we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, you're establishing the platform, so hopefully you don't have to next year. Thank you. In but a it year. Is fun. One so more year, you're going to do this all over again. I know. I keep <laughs> saying that to myself because it's almost the spring of 2024, and I'm like, wait, this is going to have to do this all over again. But yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. It is exciting. And I really am having fun. That's the other thing. So. Um, that's important. Maybe I'll just have a little less fun less next time. No such thing. No. <laughs> can you share with everyone where they can find you, where they can buy the Gardens of Eden and, and download your ebooks too? <laughs> Absolutely. So the Gardens of Eden is available wherever books are sold. I've always wanted to say that. So I love saying it now. <laughs> and uh, please visit my website, which is Rosie Lee Books. It's R-O-S-E-Y-L-E-E Books, B-O-O-K-S. Dot com And I am at Rosie Lee Books on um, all social media platforms. So let's hang out. Let's chat. And she's absolutely amazing. She's a oh. wonderful, beautiful person inside and out. So follow her, thank buy you. the book, do all the things. And I can't thank you enough for being on the show and for being such a supportive friend. I'm so glad that we've gotten to meet. Thank you so much. Well, I will also say that it takes one to know one. So right oh, back at you. Thank you. You're welcome. It's been great talking with you. Okay, friends. I hope you're all smiling from this extremely fun conversation that I got to have with Rosie. And I hope you all go out and get the book because who doesn't need healthy comfort food? I really want to learn more about that because it's something I could use in my life. I'm a big fan of the comfort food. As always, I want you to remember that you are in charge of your future and whatever that looks like. And so even if you have a career right now, and yet you want to do something like write and not have the two intermingle, let Rosie be the example for you that you can make both things happen and you can do them successfully. Don't let image or who you are, your public persona, get in the way of that. Go after your dreams, make it happen. And don't forget to make new friendships. You can do that online too. It's not a weird thing at all. Some of my best relationships have come out of my online DMs, friendships, and you can connect with people from all around the world in that way and not just simply in your backyard. Happy early Valentine's Day to each and every one of you. I do truly love you and appreciate you.